Adopting instead of giving birth. Selfish. Apologies if this isn't the right subreddit for this, I couldn't really think what would be. I'm 24F and married. 24M, we both want to have children at some point in the next few years but there's no urgency about it. I've been thinking more and more recently about going straight to adoption as a first option rather than getting pregnant. I'm worried that my reasoning for this might be selfish. The long and short of it is that I don't really want to be pregnant or give birth, I don't want my body to change forever. I don't want more stretch marks than I already have. Loose skin, wider hips, saggier or bigger boobs, not to mention other possibilities like bad teeth, thinning hair and a weak pelvic floor. We're in the UK and as far as I can tell, admittedly my research has just been a quick Google search, so if anyone has any recent experience please do correct me. The process is nowhere near as expensive as it is in the US. Obviously I'm aware that adoption isn't selfish, if anything, adopting a child in need of a home seems far less selfish than making a whole new one, but I can't shake the feeling that my motivations, basically, so that I can have the most conventionally attractive body that I can for as long as possible, is inherently selfish. I'm really interested to hear thoughts on this. TL, Doctor, is it selfish to adopt without even trying to conceive naturally in order to keep a conventionally attractive body? Everyone who has a child, via any means is making some sort of selfish choice. Same way anyone who doesn't have one is making a selfish choice. When it comes to children, you really should do exactly what you wanna do. Motivations are complex and messy, but if you want to be somebody's parent, and put in that work in any which way to become somebody's parent, then go be somebody's parent as best as you can be and don't stress the details. Your body is your body and pregnancy does affect it in huge ways and if that's not something you're comfortable with then nobody can force you to be pregnant, it's not selfish, or shallow as I saw someone in the comments say, at all. I'm a parent by adoption in the UK so have some experience here. I think you need to find out more about what adoption actually involves. There's no private adoption in the UK, so the children up for adoption are usually removed from their birth families for a reason and traumatized by their experiences and often have additional needs. You don't rock up and get handed a healthy baby and have it be all plain sailing. You'll need to learn what it means to be a therapeutic parent. It is rewarding but it can be incredibly tough at times. Social workers will probe you deeply on why you want to adopt and what you have to offer. They are not in the business of finding children for families. They want to find the right family for the children that need them. You will need to demonstrate extensive childcare experience, preferably as a volunteer, so you can show you know how to interact with children. I'd recommend reading No Matter What and the Unofficial Guide to Adoption both by Sally Donovan who gives a very honest account of what being an adoptive parent involves. Your local authority will run information evenings, probably by Zoom at moment, so you can inquire what it means. It is not a quick process. I'm a big advocate for adoption, but you have to go in 100% committed and informed. Hi, adopted person here. Honestly anyone who's willing to adopt should. The only case where I don't really appreciate people who adopt is when it's solely in order to look good. They have some white savior complex type deal. But in your case and if you have the means go for it. Too many people are obsessed with having their own kids or continuing bloodlines etc. So I personally really appreciate any people who aren't. Also, if you're worried about your motivation being superficial, regarding your body, don't be. Pregnancy and labor are huge deals and if it's not something you see yourself being comfortable with, adoption is a completely viable option? Question mark. The media just continuously portrays adoption as a last resort or something for same-sex couples but that's not the case at all. Do what feels best for you. It's really reassuring to hear this from someone who is themselves adopted. I think you're exactly right that the media really tries to drill in the idea that adoption is either for same-sex couples or couples who have failed to conceive naturally, which I think is where I'm getting the feeling of selfishness from. It's the idea that there are people who can't conceive naturally and wish they could, and here's me not even bothering to try and skipping straight to adoption. The reality is that I couldn't care less whether a child has physically come out of me and has half my genes, I don't think it makes a difference at all. 
not at all selfish. Your body is your own and if you don't want to sacrifice your body as it is for a child then you have every right to do so. Pregnancy and childbirth are huge events for the body to cope with and as you say may never go back to how it was before that. It's a very real and plausible reason to not want to be pregnant and you don't have to justify yourself to anybody else. It's kinda drilled into women from birth in most societies that it's a blessing and a miracle to be able to carry a baby but to be honest I always found that the horrors and real issues of pregnancy and childbirth are skipped over in favor of painting it as a wonderful thing where nothing ever goes wrong. Well, things can go wrong and it can change you permanently and I think it's good to research and acknowledge this before diving into it blindly. I hope that whatever you decide, you make the right decision for you and you only. Society glosses over the downsides of pregnancy and childbirth because if they didn't a hell of a lot fewer women would be interested. Tearing your vagina is a pretty off-putting prospect. I, 26F, am the one underachiever in my family, 21F slash 50F slash 53M. So my parents and younger sister are all super career driven, motivated types. My dad runs a software company, my mom is a corporate executive, my sister already has high profile internships. My husband, married one year, is a tech genius who got his dream job at 22. And then there's me. I had hoped to be a doctor. But although I was smart through school, my grades weren't great in college and I found another health related career. It's a good field but not my passion or anything. I mainly chose it because I wanted a strict 9 to 5 where I didn't have to think about work while at home. I'm very much type B and prefer lazing around and doing nothing rather than constantly striving for self improvement. Everyone expects better of me. To this day my dad talks about what a good doctor I'd be. My mom always asks about my creative goals. I have a struggling hobby. I have a project, let's call it a YouTube channel, that gets basically no views. I struggle to stay motivated because I'm not really achieving. I constantly feel like I need to prove myself. Is there a way I can stay close to my family and also have them understand my type B low motivation nature? Too long didn't read, type B surrounded by type A's. I feel misunderstood. Choosing a career and throwing your entire life in with it does not equal personal development. You struggling here does. Just keep on keeping on, and try things that interest you, no matter how silly it may appear. Doesn't work out at once. Good, that's normal. You're just trying, getting a feel. To play is to learn and to learn is to play. I am lazy, and proud of it. But if I want something, I blow most folks out of the water. It took years upon years of struggle before I realized I'm not the problem. Listening to other people's bullshit is. Forget them, do you? You may be surprised what you will find when you are behind the wheel. You just do you smile it's fine not to be a high achiever and it's fine to just not mind. When they ask you just say I'm quite comfortable with what I'm doing at the moment, I may choose to do that in future. They don't get to pick your life and you just need to give yourself permission to not mind what they think, you're awesome the way you are if it makes you happy. Carry it this. Life is too damn short spending it living up to others expectations or values. If you are happy, taken care of and meeting your own expectations, give yourself a break, breathe and be happy. Hopefully your family loves you enough that your happiness will mean more than your job title. A prestigious career is highly overrated when it comes to quality of life. In brief, it's a scam. Maybe you need to bring this up with your family so that they will stop pestering you. I say own it. It's great to be that motivated but you shouldn't force yourself to be something other than you're not. There's pros and cons to being A or B. But while being a go-getting type A might get the accolades there's definitely joy and freedom in being type B. I was sort of in the same situation as you are, and my family weren't so much total go-getters but it was more a case of, get your life settled already. Well, I ended up moving to another country. I'm the lone person who never had kids and there are a number of things I've pursued they probably wouldn't have understood. But this is your life, it matters what you want to spend or waste your days on. Don't focus on them. Be unapologetic about who you are and just go and do what piques your interest. Lastly you might want to check out this book called Big Magic, it's a great perspective for those of us who didn't pop out of the womb going I want to be XYZ. 
I mean, do you and your husband need more money? Are you guys comfortable? Not everybody has to have a big fancy job to be an achiever. Just because you're an unachiever by one or two people's perspective doesn't actually mean you're an underachiever. Everybody is different. Trust me, I know. I am the underachiever in my family. I'm 32 and just started college again. But you know what now I'm sure what I want to do. And I'm good at it because of that. It just took me a little longer in a different way. My mom is very her way or no way so as far as she still considered I'm not good enough. But I'm happy so that's good enough for me. Confused by my what my girlfriend has told me. Need help. Hello, I'm a male, 21 and from the UK. I have been with my girlfriend for 4 years and we are each other's first proper love. Recently my girlfriend has told me that she doesn't know whether she can stay with me, because she feels that we are different people that we were 4 years ago when we got together. She says that we have a lot of interests that are dissimilar and that we are completely different people now. She says that I am not great when communicating and we don't laugh and joke around anymore. I have not particularly noticed this but she says it's an issue. She also mentioned that she has not felt the same since university, where I treated her badly by not wanting to see her as often as I should. She says that this has made her think that she can manage without me, but I don't think I can manage without her. She has said that I don't make her laugh as much as I used to and I'm not as engaging in conversation as I should. She says it's not my fault, but it's not what she wants from a relationship. I think the worst thing is, that I did not see this coming. I thought our relationship has been great but clearly she is unhappy. I need any advice on how to feel, what to do or how to make things better because it is killing me that she doesn't feel as happy as I do. We are staying together for now and trying things but I can't help overthinking everything. Too long didn't read, my girlfriend thinks we've drifted apart and is considering breakup, but I don't think we have drifted apart. What should I do? Edit, she also says that she thinks we are different people to who we were when we were 17, which was 4 years ago. But surely everyone would be from 4 years. Conclusion, we decided to split up. Thanks for everyone's thoughts and comments. She might be feeling a bit neglected by you or that you've gotten too comfortable and hence put less effort into interacting with her. When people are together for a long time they get lazy. Keep trying to improve your communication with her, maybe try to show an active interest in one of her hobbies slash interests, and make sure to tell her clearly that you don't think you can manage without her. If her unhappiness stems from lack of attention from you, doing these things will help her feel happier. If she has outgrown your relationship then I don't think there's anything you can really do. Thanks. I'll give it a go. Yeah I understand why she would feel neglected, as I really messed up. She means the world to me and the fact I did that to her is a massive mistake. I defo got lazy as well. It's my own fault really, pensive face. I'm not sure exactly what you expect to get here. You ask how to feel, but that's not something anyone tells you to do or even a choice you can make. You feel how you feel. That's how it works. As for what to do to make things better, she told you what she wants. She wants more quality time with you and to see you more often. She wants to talk more. She wants you to joke around like you used to. So do. I guess my only actual advice is this. Quality time doesn't count if you're distracted. I have no idea if this is something you do, but if you get your phone out and look at it while you're with her, fucking stop. Keep that thing put away. I am guilty of this I can't lie.